All right, folks, what you should be seeing now is a live view again down there from SLC 40. That is CRS 19. That is the Dragon up on top of the Falcon 9. Standing by for launch, the photographers are actually out there right now setting up their remote cameras. So when you get all those awesome remote camera shots that look like, wow, how do they literally stick a camera up the engine bell? That's what the photographers are doing right now. Now, the launch isn't for another four, what is it, what do we have going on here? Four hours and 24 minutes, upper left-hand corner. And uh, what we are doing is getting all those cameras set up. Let's see if Chris Gebhardt is ready to go down there. And again, thank you for joining us. The launch is in another four hours and 24 minutes. This is the launch pad live stream early in the morning before the rocket's actually set to launch. Again, thank you for joining us. Let's see if Chris is ready to go. All right, good morning, everyone, and welcome to launch pad 40 at the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station where you are looking live at the Falcon 9 rocket as uh, it is getting ready to lift off on the 19th cargo resupply mission for the International Space Station for SpaceX. Uh, before we give you a good up-down tour of the rocket, uh, let's talk a little bit about what this mission is doing and how it's just a little bit different than past missions. So, so first and foremost, you will notice that this is a brand new first stage core. Um, NASA had originally intended, uh, per their plan back in May, to have this be a flight proven core and to have it be the first time that NASA would use a core for the third time. But something clearly changed in that process and they are flying on a brand new Falcon 9 first stage. Now this stage, unlike previous and most of the cargo resupply missions to the station of late, will not perform a return to launch site landing. Uh, SpaceX is testing a prolonged coast of the second stage for over six hours. And in order to get that second stage into the orbit it needs to be in after the rocket drops Dragon off, uh, they need to burn the first stage a, a bit longer, about uh, 15 seconds longer than normal, and that uh, negates the ability to have enough propellant in the Falcon 9 first stage for it to return to launch site for landing. So instead, it will, whoops, sorry, that was me accidentally bumping the camera. Um, so instead it will be landing about 185 nautical miles east off the coast of Jacksonville, Florida instead, and then it will be brought back to Port Canaveral. Uh, this Cargo Dragon has flown three times, um, and uh, it's the uh, last time this particular one is slated to fly. Uh, this is also the second to last Dragon cargo mission of the CRS-1 round of contracts. Uh, so in quarter three of next year, they will transition to the CRS-2, or Cargo Resupply Services 2 contract at which point they will be using the version two of Dragon, the same version that will be used to launch crew from neighboring pad 39A, uh, just with no seats and without any display consoles and optimized for cargo. So that's a little rundown on this mission. The Dragon is slated to remain at the International Space Station for about a month. Right now they plan to unberth it um, around the 6th of January, though that precise date will be determined as they get into the mission and once they are up at the station. Uh, it is also the uh, first mission, if all the launches go as planned, the first of two missions that will arrive at the station within 48 hours of each other, the other being a Russian Progress resupply vehicle which is slated to launch uh, early in the morning on December 6th Eastern Time. So. Um, let's go ahead and get a good view of the rocket and we'll do a good tour of the rocket here and then I will take your questions. So if you've got questions, guys, go ahead and put them up in the chat here um, on the YouTube live stream and we will go through and we will answer as many of those as possible uh, before we have to leave the pad, which NASA will tell us and give us some warning of. So let us begin. Let us begin at the top of the rocket, shall we? Let's start with good old Dragon. We like Dragon, right? Yeah, we like Dragon. So here you can see the Dragon spacecraft up top with its nose cone and um, 
and launch shroud around it that will all be jettisoned once it reaches orbit. Uh, right below the um, circular gray line, you can see one of the panel coverings where uh, one of Dragon's solar arrays is. Uh, that shroud is to protect the solar arrays from uh, the uh, various aerodynamic forces that the rocket and the Dragon will experience during liftoff today. You can also see the adapter there and the transporter erector off to your the left hand side of your screen and the arms that grapple the dragon and the falcon 9 there so if we come down it's a fully new dragon so you can see the second stage there no gray stripe this time uh, a previous mission had had a gray thermal stripe to test some uh, new thermal capabilities much like this second stage is testing thermal capabilities as well on this flight but no gray stripe this time there is our interstage um, underneath or behind that black piece there of the Falcon 9 first stage is where the second stage's Merlin vacuum engine is. And there's a good shot of our grid fins. You can see all the piping on the transporter erector as we come on down. SpaceX, SpaceX, SpaceX. And there are our landing legs. So good view there hope you enjoyed that let's go back and let's start taking some of your questions now uh if you've got them in the chat uh so bear with me one quick moment as i start looking through it um so as i start finding questions um as i said the ground winds are our primary liftoff constraint today um they're not super strong right now and uh, only about a 10 percent chance that our ground winds here would um be too high to allow a liftoff today. Other than that, the biggest concern are the upper level winds. They are currently predicted to be around 120 knots out of the west northwest. Um, the good thing is that all the winds at the various levels of the atmosphere are all moving in the right or in the same direction, which means there's not a lot of wind shear, um, which would be the primary concern. But there's still an upper level, an upper wind limit that the Falcon 9. Um, has even when all those winds are going in the same direction and they said yesterday during the pre-launch briefing that if the winds hold at 120 knots and aren't higher that the analysts at SpaceX said we should be good to go but they're going to have to wait for the weather balloon data to come in for the various balloons that will be launched throughout the uh, the rest of the morning as we head toward a launch at 12:51 and 58 seconds today and it is an instantaneous launch window, a uh, single second, so there is no ability to hold for any sort of problem. There's a backup opportunity tomorrow, if it should be needed, um, and that would result in a launch at 12.29 uh, tomorrow, if we should need it, but hopefully we won't need that. So let's scroll through and get some, some questions here. Um, so which CRS missions will start using the Dragon 2 capsules? That's an excellent question. The answer is the uh, CRS-21, which is currently slated to fly in the third quarter of 2020. So, yeah, so actually what we're here right now, we're here for remote camera setup. Um, I can't swivel the camera to show you because that would show other launch pads and we're not allowed to show uh, other launch pads here as part of our rule, but there are photographers and videographers all around me setting up their equipment uh, to bring you some wicked awesome photos of the launch. Um, we also have for NASA Spaceflight, we have Brady Kennison, who is actually at the Astronaut Beach House setting up a remote video camera there. So we should be able to give you a, a pretty good variety of video for this launch uh, later today. Uh, launch is at 12.51 and 58 seconds today. Uh, with a backup opportunity tomorrow uh, guys if you got questions throw them up here if you uh if you've got them um i'm not really seeing a lot of questions here um oh the host uh I, so yes i kind of forgot that uh so uh chris gephardt uh i am here as your host today for this pad tour uh and i will also be back with you at 11:50 a.m eastern time uh, for our launch live cast and webcast that will begin an hour before our targeted liftoff. Uh, the noise you are hearing is actually the bus um, that brought us all here. Um, it's, it's a rather noisy bus. Um, so, you know, you got some stuff. 
Uh, it's great to see all of you joining us from around the world. We're excited to be here and we're excited to bring it to you. Um, so, like I said, guys, if you've got some, if you got questions, throw them up here. Um, so we do have a question of how many times can the Falcon 9s be reflown? Um, each booster can be reflown up to 100 times. Uh, the current plan is they will fly 10 times and then uh, they'll really go in and look at them to make sure they can, um, uh, that, that they're still good to go and continue flying. They'll get a bit more refurbishment than they get uh, in the more rapid turnarounds between flights. But um, yeah, each booster, 10 flights before an inspection and up to 100 according to Elon Musk. Um, so that is that. And this is an East Coast launch. It's launching from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, pad 40. Uh, what's really cool, guys, and we are hoping someone will be able to get a picture of this, is that the uh, Atlas V with Starliner on top of it rolled out yesterday. So there is a Falcon 9 with Dragon and an Atlas V with Starliner on adjacent launch pads here. And that is a wicked cool sight to see um, as we head toward, uh, as we continue the cargo resupply efforts here and we have commercial crew coming online. Um, So just continuing to look through here, um, CRS-2 capsules, we have a question about the CRS-2 contract capsules. Can they only launch from 39A? Uh, the answer is actually no. They can launch from both 40 and 39A. Uh, the cargo dragons were specifically designed, um, according to SpaceX, for that to be launch pad agnostic. Um, however, the crew version of Dragon 2 has to launch from 39A as it is the only pad with an access tower and a an arm to allow the astronauts to board but the cargo variants can launch from either pad which is a great question um great question there rudy um a slick 40 cannot support falcon heavy missions it can only support falcon 9 as well another good question rudy um the falcon heavies have to launch from 39a that's the only spacex pad capable of launching that one um, so yeah, if you're just joining the feed, we are live at Slick 40. This is the Falcon 9 rocket with the CRS-19 Cargo Dragon um, that is uh, slated to launch here at 1251 Eastern. That is our primary mission today. It will take Dragon three days to rendezvous and phase to the International Space Station. So assuming a launch today, Dragon will arrive in the early morning hours of Saturday. Um, so we have a question here. Um, about what do you mean about thermal testing for the second stage? Is it for the engine or for the stage as a whole, just coasting for longer? So yeah, that's a great question. So the thermal test they're really looking at is how well um, the propellant uh, stays in the tank for prolonged coast periods of up to six hours. Those six hour coasts are needed for future customers where you're talking about more direct um, uh, long coast missions where you then have to fire the engine to get into higher earth orbits than low earth orbit. Um, so they're continuing to test that and show agencies like the Air Force and the U.S. government exactly what the Falcon second stage is capable of doing in terms of those prolonged coasts and keeping the propellant stable and at good temperatures for the reignition of that second stage after several hours in orbit. Um, do the solar array covers become space debris? That's an excellent question. Um, the solar array covers are actually jettisoned during the launch phase after Falcon 9 has climbed out of the lower, the dense lower atmosphere and is actually in space. Um, so they are not orbital when they are jettisoned, so they just come back in and are either torn up by aerodynamic forces or um, splash down destructively in the ocean. So they do not become space debris. Excellent, excellent question there. Um, from Pascal. Um, from Chris Engel, um, is there any noticeable difference or uh, difference in appreciation with the new core versus a previously flown booster? Um, the only thing that's really noticeable is just its color. It's a pristine white um, and that's really the only difference. Um, they keep the engines, the landing legs, the grid fins um, are, are all reusable. So the only appreciable difference is that um, is that it, they just don't bother to wipe the soot off and clean them as they are reused. Uh, again, you know, uh, we're here for the Falcon 9 launch. Launch is at 12.51 and 58 seconds today. That 58 seconds might adjust by a second or two 
um, based on day of launch positioning of the International Space Station. Um, uh, how far into the countdown can they decide to scrub due to weather? Uh, so they can take it down to um, five seconds if they absolutely had to um, before engine ignition, before scrubbing. Um, the weather balloon data, the final weather balloon data l will usually come in between 20 and 10 minutes before liftoff. So um, that's when if, if the upper level winds look acceptable or look like they're pretty high and and everything, we might expect a last minute decision in that 20 to 10 minute before launch time frame um, based on that final weather balloon data. But they can go down pretty far in the count. Um, especially since this is an instantaneous single second window if there's any chance they will start fueling and they will go as far as they possibly can um, we saw this on the last crs mission uh, as well when we were battling weather here in florida uh, our summertime thunderstorms where we um where they just took it down to under a minute sometimes waiting um waiting to see if they could get that hole in the weather um and we are going to have to wrap it up here we are being told to go ahead and get back on the bus so thank you all for joining us um please come back and join us for our live stream starting at 11 50 eastern time eastern standard time today an hour before liftoff where we will be here with you uh bringing you the countdown the fueling and the launch of the falcon 9 until then thank you if i did not get to your question um and you are coming back for our live stream post your question up there in the new stream when it starts and we will definitely get to it thank you all for joining us and uh have a great day we'll see you back here for launch a launch and complex for you scheduled for today. We will use the capable warning system to advise you of required action. Launch toxic shelters may be required for your protection. Approved launch toxic shelters are identified by the ground sign at the main facility entrance. In support of this launch, emergency vehicles will be traversed through areas of peak travel air station both prior to and immediately after launch. Launch viewers are reminded that they are to yield the right of way to emergency vehicles at all times whenever they are displaying emergency lights and or sirens. Additionally, personnel are instructed to refrain from driving on Titan Free Road and Centaur Road until 15 minutes after launch to allow safe travel to pad entry points. Your cooperation is essential to avoid personal risk or injury. All right, folks. Again, that was Chris Gebhardt live from Cape Canaveral. I'm back here. Das, that is the end of the early morning live stream. Again, uh, thank you so much for joining us. It is just about four hours until the launch. So that was a setup stream. Again, people standing by, uh, the photographers are out there. They're putting up their remote cameras. When you see all of those awesome pictures where it looks like somebody literally put a, pic, a, a camera up the engine bell of the rocket, uh, that's what they're out there doing right now. But the launch is going to be about four hours from now, just over four hours right now. And uh, we will be back about one hour in advance. That's going to be 11. 11.50 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, just about four hours from now, for an actual live view of the launch for CRS-19 today. Again, thanks for joining us. In the meantime, if you're looking for something to do, you can actually go ahead and check out the forums over at nasaspaceflight.com. I think we're going to have uh, the launch article up. There's a live update thread as well. We'll put some links for that in chat. I think actually Nightbot just puts a Twitter account there. So there's lots of ways to keep up over the next couple hours. In the meantime, we're going to go ahead and sign off, and we will see you nerds later. Thanks again for joining us.